Khalil is the consensus number one player in the nation. He has to go down in Chicago basketball history as the most decorated basketball player of all time. Dolphins on a mission. State championship. Mission accomplished for the Dolphins. Two city championships. He's also won three, three gold medals. For Team USA. The Sun-Times Player of the Year. He's the McDonald's All-American. MVP of the McDonald game. MVP of the Jordan game. MVP of two USA Olympics. I mean, it's been unheard of. The person that's the number one player in the country is without question the number one player in the city of Illinois. How about that? <laughs> that's NBA-ish post play right there by Jaleel Okafor heading to Duke. You can't stop him one-on-one. -on -one. Time to stop that. Jaleel Okafor. Nobody's been able to stop him all year. I'm so impressed with his mobility. This young man is a double-double waiting to have him. Elio? Okay. He is high character, low maintenance. He also blocks shots. He's one of the best. He's about winning. He's just adding to the legend now. The number one player, not in the city, not in the city, not in the state, but in the United States of America. Jaleel Okafor. He's Mr. Basketball this year. No question about it. During the 2014 IHSA basketball season, there were heavy discussions on who should win the prestigious Mr. Basketball Award. But by season's end, Jalil Okafor left little room for debate, leading Whitney Young to their third state championship in school history and later becoming the first Dolphin ever to garner the highest individual award for the state of Illinois. Jalil cemented his legacy boldly on the high school level. Now add those accomplishments to the lengthy list of accolades for a player that will soon bring his game to a platform more suitable for his unique talent. His talents are equally matched by a drive whose origins began from a tragic loss, a loss that made him into the astounding young man he is today. You know the player. Let's meet the person. 2014 Mr. Basketball of Illinois, Jaleel Okafor. Okafor, he's just added to the legend now. Jaleel, what's up? Was it love at first sight when you first picked up the basketball and made your first basket? Uh, I'll say so. Um, I don't remember my first basket. Uh, I just seen like videos of me in diapers, you know, uh, dunking on a, a little ghetto rim. My dad would call it with the hanger, you know, dunking on that. But I don't remember my first basket. But for as long as I can remember, you know, I've been playing basketball. Now, Chuck, did you know that he was going to be a basketball player by looking at his measurements when he was born? He was a huge baby at nine pounds, seven ounces. I knew he was going to be a basketball player because he was my son. Working it around. There is Okafer. His shot is good for Chucky. Okafer driving in. Okafer. Now, you come from good stock. Your mom played high school basketball. Your dad played high school basketball. Both were stars there. They played college basketball as well. So did you think you had an advantage with the game because you came from good stock like your parents? I knew I had an advantage with my height. You know, my mother was 6'3", and my father is 6'5 and a half. So I knew that was an advantage in itself. But um, I definitely knew that, you know, my mom, had a lot of game. People used to always tell me in my neighborhood, you know, how good she was and she had a bad knee and a bad attitude. Just like my father, which, you know, stopped both of them from really reaching their dreams basketball wise. But it was an advantage having both of them, you know, having basketball in their background. Say mm. dada. 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 What do you remember about him as a child? What was he like? Into everything. Uh, <laughs> I mean, but in a, in a good way. In a good way. Like, just trying to find his way around the world, I was saying. But like any child, just being curious about nature. All right, Chinyu, what was Jaleel like as a child from your perspective? He was big. <laughs> I think one of the memories I remember the most when I took him to Foot Locker. And people in Foot Locker all just kind of surrounded, like, look at his hands, look at him. That's when I think I, I realized he was a little tall, maybe. He was just a big boy, so always big. Right, now, how would you describe your relationship with your nephew? Unique. Special, or sometimes personal. Jalea, what you doing, Boo Boo? What you doing? Eh? Nothing. Ah! <laughs> Is that what you said, nothing? Ah. 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 Say, Mama. Ah. Say, Mama. Hands down, was probably the most. I mean, I lost my mom at an early age, but this had to be the worst feeling that I have ever endured uh, in my life up to this point. I don't, I don't remember the details at all. I just remember, like, darkness. I just remember Chakoti saying, this couldn't happen, how this happened to both of us. I was nine. It was when I was living um, back in Moffitt, Oklahoma. 
Uh, I was with my sister and uh, my two younger brothers. We were all in the house. And then uh, my mother, she just started breathing real hard. And um, I thought she was kidding. And of course, she's never kidded like that before. But, you know, as a child, I really didn't know what was going on. And uh, she just kept breathing harder and harder. My sister realized first that uh, she wasn't playing. And uh, actually, it was uh, just bad luck because the house phone was disconnected, so it wasn't working. So I remember screaming and crying, running to the neighbor's house, going, ha having to use their phone and calling the ambulance. And um, I remember there, uh, they're coming in, you know, putting her on the floor, uh, ripping her shirt open, putting things on her chest. I don't really know what they were and uh, taking her away. And um, on the way to the hospital, I called my dad. Uh, I let him know what was going on. He was in Chicago, you know, working. I remember receiving just a phone call and Jolly was another line. And it wasn't, it wasn't a conversation, it was just a cry. And I knew right at that point, something was just dramatically wrong. Waiting in the room with my sister, a few of my other family members. Um, and then the doctor came out and, you know, he told me that uh, my mother didn't make it. And, uh, uh, <laughs> Take your time, it's all right. I'm sure she's extremely proud of the way that you, you've grown up and a lot of the things that you've accomplished on and off the court. Thank you. Uh, and you've, you've also mentioned that she's your angel, she's your wings when you're on the basketball court. So. Yeah. Uh, Definitely. Have there been moments you can feel her presence while you're out there on the court? All the time, yeah. Uh, it gives me a little confidence when I'm on the court, you know. Me thinking she's my wings out there, uh, but uh, the doctor told me she didn't make it. I stayed at the hospital for like three to four hours after. Uh, me and my sister, I remember just going in the room. Uh, I kept rubbing her hair. It was really soft, and I just kept going back and forth. Uh, I didn't want to leave. But um, yeah, I remember that day, like it was yesterday. Uh, think about it often. Uh, I think about that day often. The strength that I saw Adam in an early age is how he handled that situation. But ultimately I told him he would never get over it. My older sister was there with me. I see my mom all over her face. They look pretty much identical. I just always find myself staring at my sister. And then she'll be like, what are you staring at? Like, you look like my mom. <laughs> but, um, you know, I miss my mom so much. I, it hasn't been a day that went by where I haven't thought about her, but uh, she's still with me, like you said. You know, she's my angel on the court. You guys grew up on the south side of Chicago, but when Job moved back home to Chicago, you moved to Rosemont. You want to have them living in a better environment. Why was that important for you? I was born and raised on the south side, east side of Chicago, and I know how easy it is to be distracted from your goals and your dreams. I know how easy it is to be pulled in a different direction. I wanted him to be the man that he wanted to be. I thought Rosemont provided him with the best environment for that to happen. Now, were you shocked at the advanced skill level that he had at that age? Not only was I shocked, I was more amazed that there was a person out there that had those kinds of skills. You know, you see so many good players, and to be as skilled as he was at such an early age was kind of eye-opening that there were people out there that were that skilled. As a father, but also as a basketball enthusiast, I always knew his just for greatness. I would email North Carolina, Georgetown, Dukes, Maryland, and tell them they better put Jalil on their radar. So I mean, when DePaul offered them, it wasn't a surprise that they offered them, it was just a surprise how quickly it happened. And from that moment, I knew it would never be the same. Pearson finding the freshman in the dunk. All right, Coach, now when you were notified that Jalil will be attending Whitney Young High School, what expectations did you have for his career? We knew that there was an inordinate amount of ability, and we also knew that the best part of him was still yet before him, given the fact that he was just 13, 14 years old, and he was still carrying around some baby weight. We recognized that the skills coupled with his willingness to learn and his ability to play, the answer to that question was limitless. Up the floor, Big Bella Okafor is taking this game over as a freshman, he has 12. He's not playing like a freshman, there are a lot of college coaches in here taking notes. I just remember how excited I was to, you know, go to Whitney Young and the expectations on me in high school. 
Uh, they really, you know, motivated me to continue to work hard, being notarized as one of the top freshmen. A lot of trash talk, saying I was overrated, and uh, that motivated me, and I realized, you know, right off the bat, that I had a huge target on my back. Okafor, face up, what an up and under move, and he got the shooters wrong. Boy, he's a freshman. The leader for Mr. Basketball three years from now, I would say, at this point. Uh, he would think so. Coach, he didn't play me that much. Uh, I was on the bench for him my freshman year. I'm not perfect. By no means am I perfect. And I made some fatal flaws in his freshman year. I look back at it, and had I done some things differently, the outcome and the direction that we had gone as a team might have been different. Tolliver trying to dribble it out. Farragut wins it. They're going to the Super Sectionals after beating Whitney Young 44-42. to But we chalk that up, and we learn from those lessons, and we move on. Tonight, it's a boys 4A section semifinal as Whitney Young gets set to take on the number one ranked Simeon Wolverines. You know, all before Jim, he had a triple double the last game out. One thing about this young man, he is finally getting into shape, so he's a little more explosive. You know what the outcome is ultimately going to be. The fun of it is just watching it as it develops along the way, and, and that's really what it turned out to be with Jaleel. Okafor on Parker. Okafor wins that battle with Titan two. You know, a lot of times you talk about players that have ability and they have those certain gifts. He had all of those, and he was committed to being the very best. Okafor, oh, he put on the floor, Kenny, but he got it anyway. Offensively, Jaleel playing like a man down low. Ah, uh, Jaleel is a man. All right, Coach, good luck in the second half. Thank you very much. You know, a lot of times, Doors closed make you more interested in getting through the next door. I tell people all the time, I've learned more from my losses than I have from my victories. We have a 10 point win for the Simeon Wolverines. The Wolverines will keep alive their dream of winning a third straight state title. I think that when we look at those years that we were denied an opportunity to win a state or even play for a state championship, there were some things that we had to get better at as a team, as individuals, and as coaches. And I think that along the way, we did that. Jalil Okafor came into the season, ranked the number one player in the junior class in the country, and he's done nothing to lose that number one ranking. Notwithstanding the people that stood in front of us, they were pretty formidable. Remember, it is Okafor who is the Sun-Times Player of the Year. It is not Jabari Parker, which will make it interesting when the voting for Mr. Basketball comes up. We don't ever want to discount the competition because at the end of the day, the competition is what also makes us better. Junior year, I feel like we had an amazing team with LJ Peak and Paul Wade. By any measure, no matter whose rankings you go by, this is a battle between the number one and the number two teams in the state of Illinois in Class 4A. Uh, we had all the pieces and we still came up short. And Okafor comes out and cannot believe it's come to an end. Normally it could take two weeks before you can get a word out of Jalil. After that loss, I mean, he was back in the gym literally the next day. But again, he will be the top senior in the country next year. And let's bring in two of the top four rated prospects in the ESPN 100, Jaleel Okafor in Chicago and Tyus Jones in Apple Valley, Minnesota. They handled the process, the two of them, greatly. And it was ultimately his decision. And we're so grateful and pleased with this decision that he made. Yes. It is time to show America where will you be attending school together? Duke University. Duke University. Jamil Okafor and Tyus Jones. A package deal at Mike Krzyzewski and the Blue Devils. Get both of them. This decision was very important to me, but the most important thing to me right now, dealing with basketball, is winning the state championship. So I just wanted to get this out the way. I did a huge relief off my shoulders and focus on winning the state championship with my teammates. That summer, I just went extremely hard, you know, growing into my senior year, I had a bunch of accolades already, you know, MVP, gold medals, and uh, I never was able to, you know, do the one thing, which was win the state championship for my high school because of Simeon and Jabari Parker. It made everyone more hungry. It made everybody more mindful of what was necessary to get to that level. And I think the culmination of that was this season. We had a saying for the team, you know, the main thing is keeping the main thing the main thing, and that was winning the state championship. My teammates, they had my back 100%, and they understood, you know, how important that was to me, and it was important to them, too. All of the things that we had endured those previous two, three years led to us being able to do what we did this season. All right, guys, here we go again. If your dreams don't scare you, 
they may not be big enough. A sectional semifinal against Simeon, it yeah. seemed like you were on another level because of the, the past uh, adverse times that they put you through. Guys, I dare each one of you in this room to dream that you're in Peoria next Thursday afternoon. And we have a good one for you tonight. Was it something in your mind when you took the court before the ball tipped that you said, hey, we're going to get these guys this year? Yeah, you know, just losing to Simeon uh, the past, the prior years to that, uh, it's kind of a mental thing, like, man, we keep losing to these guys. The Simeon Wolverines are trying to do something no team has ever done, win five state titles in a row. You know, every time we play Simeon, you know, you kind of overthink it because it means so much to you to want to get past that team finally. And yet here's Whitney Young, the number one ranked team in the state. Us as a team, we're just trying not to overthink it. The only reason that we want to win this game is because it allows us to move on. Now Okafor spins toward the baseline Ooh. reverse. How about that? We can't look at them as Simeon. We have to look at them as just another team that we have to beat. TJ Williams will slam it home. I think we went down 11 points in the third quarter. 12 point lead for the Wolverines over the number one team in the state. I remember telling myself, there's no way I'm about to lose to Simeon again. And they're about to put me out, you know, for my high school career. I remember I had a dunk. Okafor jams at home and he gets fouled. And I just remember screaming uh, during my team hype. He doesn't like having his shot blocked. Good night. Well, that really woke the crowd up. And then from there, you know, Paul got going, Rodney got going, Miles got going, and uh, we were able to finish that game through, but we were down by 11 in the third quarter. White with the bucket, counted to go to the line. And after they easily been the end for us, so I didn't want that to happen. Full court pressure, broken. Okafor with a jam from Paul White. Now you get past this hurdle, what's it mean to you? You know, this wasn't a game we wanted to win for revenge or anything like that, because I can never get those three years back without a loss. So we just wanted to win this game so we could play on Friday. Tonight's 4A section final, it's Whitney Young taking on St. Rita. First of all, congratulations for getting to this game. We're at this point today because we've earned the right to be at this point. This is the hottest ticket in high school basketball. It's going to be claustrophobic, loud, and highly competitive. Okafor. Makes a move and jams at home. What a move. Okafor jams at home again. What a player. Eliop. Okafor with the assist for Miles Reynolds. Okafor gets the rebound, spins around, long, jams at home, and gets fouled. There's your highlight reel. Blocked by Okafor. He is really the best player in the country. He's just added to the legend now. There's nobody better than you, Big Tom. Nobody better. A huge game on a huge stage for Joel Okafor. You know, I knew this could potentially be my last game, you know, ever putting on a Wendy Young jersey, so I wanted to leave everything out on the court tonight, and that's what I did. All right, now what stands out to you about that trip to Peoria? Uh, that whole magical run and winning the state championship. The Stevenson game was, uh, it was amazing. Uh, a lot of fun. But you can't oh. stop that. Oh, baby. My goodness. Don't do them like that, Jalil. We play in what is considered the game of, of the decade where a young man, Jalen Brunson, has 56 points. What a night from Jalen Brunson. That was a great game, uh, a hard fought battle. We had to leave the entire game, but. It was never a comfortable lead. You head to Okafor. Oh, my goodness. Watch your head. Wow. Shine on, Jaleel. Shine on. And Jalen Brunson, uh, 56 points. I think the rest of his team only had no more than four points individually. And there's another three-point basket from the junior. 56 points. You know, and Jaleel basically said to all of the guys was, he can have 76 points. We move on to the next game. The bottom line is, Whitney Young will be playing for the state championship tomorrow night. This is surreal. Uh, I've been wanting to do this since eighth grade, and I failed so many times over and over again. So I'm just happy to be here, and hopefully I can finish it off the right way. Good evening, basketball fans. On behalf of the Illinois High School Association of the city of Peoria, welcome to Carver Arena for America's original March Madness. Tonight's Class 4A title game features the Chicago Whitney Young Dolphins, 27 and 5, and the Lyle Bennett Academy Red Wings, 25 and 7. The basketball season has come down to this. It will be Sean O'Meara and Jaleel Logafort going up at half court. His only goal, his main purpose in life is senior year. 
was to get that state championship. I mean, that's a tough shot from White, but there's open four. Moving bodies out of his way. As far as how hard he worked, it would have just been unfair if he didn't get to close off his chapter of his high school career with that state championship. Senior year, that was the only thing my mind was on, you know. I couldn't imagine, you know, leaving with Young and not putting the banner up on the wall. Whitney Young has to get something on this possession. They've had too many empty possessions in this third quarter. Okafor. Wow. That's a big time move right there. That's not yep. just a college move, that's a pro move. It was easy to challenge him with the fact that this is all on you because the way he plays the game is he wants the last shot. And the bigger the game, the better the player. So it was easy to tell him that whatever happens with this team and this season, it all lies at your feet. And as a result of that, they saw Okafor coming down the lane with the one-handed hammer. We ultimately wound up winning a state championship, and he and the other two, three seniors, they were very, very fundamental in us being able to win a state championship. Reynolds, bring it up. Miles Reynolds stepped up big and really led us to the whole state championship game. Hey. Hey, the Red Wings just attacking the rim is Miles Reynolds. The conversation that I had with not just Jaleel, but with all three of our seniors, Jaleel, Miles, and Paul, was very simply, wherever this team went this year, is where they would take us. There's Paul White again, senior to senior. How we got to the end of the game isn't the way we should have gotten to the end of the game. We were up by nine points, really in control, and we get an offensive foul, they get the ball, they make a three, and, and things just start to kind of get away from us. Pelletieri, he needs it, he got it. So now I'm really kind of mad. I'm like, what is going on here? We kept looking at the state championship like we're probably going to be state champions instead of playing that game. Pelletieri deep. Oh, man! We were just trying to get that game over with, and we ended up almost losing that game. Big one here for White. At high school basketball, what is ultimately the biggest prize that one can have? It's a four-point game. That's the state championship. Well, that was my only goal going into senior year. Nothing else really mattered to me. Have to get it up in a hurry. Milligan, he'll drive it. And they do not have to inbound the ball. They don't have to touch it. That clock is not going to stop it. The Young Dolphins are going to win their state championship of the 2014 season. It was just a great feeling. So happy. Just, you know, remember all the tears that I had before freshman, sophomore, and junior year losing to Simeon. Whitney Young watched Simeon win four straight state championships. We'll just finally be able to say, you know, I'm finally a, a state champion. But this year, mission accomplished for the Dolphins. I was more happy for them, for our players, for our fans, for our institution, that we had really fulfilled the dream. Captains of Whitney Young step forward, received from the governor the first place trophy, 2014. What's it like to win a state championship? You've dreamed about this for a while now. Uh, it's a real, kind of a bittersweet feeling, knowing us. I'm a senior and I can never do this again. This looks fun. I've only done this once, but it's been a lot of fun. He put it all together in this senior year. So when he was able to carry that state championship trophy, man, brought a tear to mind. How special was it for you to win a state championship with your dad being an assistant coach? That was very special for me. Not too many people get to share a state championship with their father. So when I went to prom, I had my ring going, he had his ring going too. So it's a pretty cool thing to share with each other. Sports Weekly would like to congratulate Jalil Okafor, Whitney Young, winner of the 2014 Mr. Basketball of Illinois. Myself, I always pictured me winning a state championship and being able to lead my team to victory and winning the Mr. Basketball West. What that meant to me, you know, if I didn't win the state championship like I did in last year, I wasn't going to win the Mr. Basketball Award. It was a slam dunk, so to speak, pardon the pun, that Jaleel Okafor would, in fact, be Mr. Basketball as well he was. And as I tell people, Jaleel was the best basketball player in the world. So to suggest that somehow he couldn't be the best player in Illinois, it's somewhat disingenuous. It was just a great feeling for me and my teammates and my family. That's when I win in Mr. Basketball really feels good. It's when, you know, the people that's close to you are seeing how happy they are for you. Jaleel is the consensus number one player in the nation. The 18th Morgan Wooten Award winner. He volunteers at a local church. He's an excellent student who was interested in communications and broadcasting. Jaleel plans to attend Duke University in the fall. And we look at Jaleel as the number one player in the country, as Mr. Basketball in the state of Illinois, as the world champion. The resume is now complete. It's complete.
the stage that he was on high school was just too small for him. He deserves a bigger stage, and really from a basketball perspective, there are a few stages bigger than that of Duke basketball. Next year, you know, I'm planning on being, you know, the most dominant player in college basketball. I'm confident I can do that. I'm gonna try to be a leader on the floor with Tyus and Coach K's basketball knowledge to the roof. So, you know, I feel pretty confident with him elevating my game to the next level in the NCAA. He's gonna be from top though, I don't doubt it. And he'll do great at Duke and Duke will love him. And I hope he does to Duke what he did to me, breaks their heart and leaves after one or two years, you know. Just leave him, just leave him, but he'll do well. Bounce pass. Jello is so blessed to have Cody, my younger brother, as his dad, because I've watched both of them grow to be men. And in Chicago, you always hear so much negativity, you know, lack of having fathers and just not having that person to go to. And for him to ensure that no one carrying his last name is going to have that experience, it's just awesome. I would like to thank my father. He's been with me every step of the way. To watch them as father and son, it's just magical, especially as an African American, to see a father and son that use the word love and that hug and embrace, and there's a genuine affection. It's incredible. And Jalil is a product of him and also a product of his mother, Dee, because Dee was the same way. And Jalil is like this melting pot of everybody that's around him. And that's the best. My dad is amazing. When uh, my mom passed, he was a uh... I think he said it once, but the loss of his mom made him appreciate everything from day to day. Like some family might go months without telling somebody they love him. I mean, we say it three, four times a day every time we got the phone. He understands that nothing is promised to you. He has totally embodied what family means, and that's all I can ask for. You give her the title Auntie Mom. Yeah. Uh, how special has she been for your life? She's been very special. Uh, she's been everything to me. Say auntie now. Say auntie. Say auntie. I just love my auntie so much, and she really is my auntie mom. And uh, my mother passed, she came to the funeral. I remember her going to the grave and saying, you know, I'm gonna take Jai's mind. She told that to my mom at her grave, and she stuck to her word, and she's been amazing to me. I wanna thank, uh, thank you to my mom, who was not here today. She passed away when I was nine. So we talk about a death, but I think that death gave him a different life. It gives him breath, it gives him a rationale about things in our world. So death has such a dark sense, but when you think of death with D, it turns into a light. I truly believe every day she's been my wings for me when I play on the court. And every day when I wake up, I pray she be my wings for the day. So I want to do a special thank you to my mom who I know is here watching me right now. You might not have your biological mother, but she is your motivation. They thought I was crazy when I used to say it, because I, I put it up in an analogy like this. Every time you feel the wind, that's your mom. I think he really understands that, that like she's always with him. People that come to know him, they will always remember the polite, respectful manner in which he addresses you. They'll always remember the humble manner of which this six foot 11 giant treats you. He is always thoughtful and he's always thankful. I think what makes him special is the family in which he's grown up in. And I think what makes him special is his willingness to be the best player and person that he can be. All right, now I want you to fill in the blank for me. The reason I love basketball is because of what? The reason I love basketball is because when I'm on the floor, just playing basketball, it lets me clear my mind, makes me feel free. My mother passed. I was the one thing I relied on. If I was thinking about it too much, I'd just go to the basketball court and I'd be good and I'd my mind to be free. And as I got older, just realizing you know, how many doors it is opening for me, just seeing how I'm a role model to some of these kids, just because you know I can play basketball pretty decently and feeling close to my mom when I step on the floor, knowing she's my wings on the floor. People say basketball is life all the time and as a joke, but to me it really is my life. And there's so many reasons why I love basketball and it's much more than a game to me.